praise. Come on. He's worthy. Amen. King Jesus, he is worthy. Amen. We thank God for our being here on today. Amen. God has blessed us to see another uh, Memorial Day uh, season. Amen. And we thank God that he did it. Amen. Amen. We uh, thank God for Lady Ross, for all of our, our leaders, our members, and certainly to all of our visitors today. We want to give our visitors another hand. Amen. For coming and sharing with us on today. We give God glory for you. And on today, I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. I just want to share. Uh, hopefully I can encourage you for a few minutes today. Amen. Uh, as Lady Ross has said earlier, last week we were on vacation. And we thank God we were able to get away for a few days and, and get a little rest and relaxation. And it's just good to be back. Amen. Uh, and on my way home, uh, as we were driving, the Lord was speaking to me and giving me this word for today. And that's what I love about God. God always, he's always talking. Amen. The question is, you know, who's listening? But God is always speaking. As I'm driving down the highway, he's speaking to me and encouraging me and giving me a word for the people. So today we're going to talk about how to get to my next rest area. Amen. Amen. Getting to my next rest area. Because uh, we all need rest at times. Amen. Amen. And we got to know that God is the one that will give us rest. And he set aside certain points and places in our life that's called what? Rest areas for us. And let's going to look at God's word and see how God gives us rest. Let's turn our attention now to the gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. The gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter, verse 30 and verse 31. If you will, please stand in the recognitions of God's word. Amen. The gospel according to Mark 6, verse 30 through verse 31. The gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter, verse 30 through verse 31. And the King James Version reads as such. It says, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest for a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. We thank God for his most holy and divine words. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King, Jesus Christ. Amen. And here we see that the apostles that came to Jesus. And they came to Jesus and they went to telling Jesus all that they had done and all that they had taught. Which means that they were working. Now if you're not working, you don't need no rest. I, I can't get no... Come on somebody. If you ain't doing nothing, then what you tired for? What you need rest for? So the disciples came to Jesus and they went to tell him, Jesus, this is what we've been doing. We've been working. And Jesus said, okay, go to a desert place, a, a place to get by yourself and what? Just rest. We all need rest. How do we know we need rest? Because in the book of Genesis, Genesis 2 and 2, I believe, when he got through, Brother Charlie, making the world and like they say, the hung the, the moon and the stars, he got through making everything, the, the scriptures declare that God rested. He rested. Not that he was tired, but that, you know, he had done his work and it was time for what to rest. And then he told the children of Israel, he gave them some, some instructions in the book of Exodus. He said, look, uh, for six years you worked the land. And on the seventh year, you let the land rest. And then he also told them, you work 
for six days. And on the seventh day, mama, he said, you rest. Now, now why? Because God knows that what? We need rest. Amen. And sometimes we can be so busy doing nothing. We can be so busy doing nothing. <laughs> How many times have we said, I'm just tired? I'm just tired. Tired of being tired. Amen. But we're talking today about what? We're talking about rest and how to get to my next rest area. As I was driving, the Lord was speaking to me and showing me. He said, you notice how the rest areas on the interstate, they're spread out, right? Rest, they're not, you won't, you won't see one here and five miles down the road, you won't see another. It's going to be about 50, maybe about 70 miles before you see another little rest area. Go with me here. And what that means is that, you know, God has placed uh, uh, intervals in our lives of, of rest times where we rest from our what? Our labor. But if you're not laboring, if you're not traveling, if you're not working, then you'll never get to that next rest area. And some of us are talking about, I want some rest, I want to get some rest, God, but God is like, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't moving. You're not, I'm talking about for the Lord now. You're not doing nothing for the Lord to, for you to reach that next, what, rest area. <sighs> Jesus said in Matthew 11, I believe, uh, he said, come unto me. I, well, let's go there, turn there. That's Matthew 11 and verse... Third, what verse, what verse is it? Matthew, is that Matthew 11? Is that Matthew, yeah, 11, verse 28 through 30. Let's go there. Let's look at that. Look, we'll look at what Jesus says. He says what? Come unto me, all ye that what? Come on now. He didn't say everybody come to me. He said, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Anybody looking for some rest? We're talking about getting to our next rest area. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, somebody say, why well, I ain't got no rest then? Why well, I'm tired. Why well, the Lord ain't gave it to me. You got to ask the right questions to get the right answer. And it goes on and says what? The next verse. It's the sec in the second verse, he says, you're going to find, he says, take my yoke upon you. What does that mean? He said, receive me as your Lord and Savior. That's what that means. Take your yoke upon me. Receive me. But then, see, a lot of us, we take the Lord. We come and we join the church. We get baptized. We take his yoke, but we don't do the next step. And learn of me. See, we don't want to take that time to learn of him. Because, see, we want to, we want to, yeah, I joined the church, Lord, I gave my life to you. And what am I rested to my soul? And he's like, no, you haven't did number two. Learn of me. You can't wait, you can't wait to come here on Sunday before you open your Bible up. We weren't looking for rest, right? We're trying to get to our next rest area. God has set forth some principles. Learn of me. 
then you're going to find rest unto your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. You know why you can't sleep at night? Because your mind